from CareCo TV, one of the longest running outdoor programs on television today. Exploring the country and the coast in search of adventures. From the mountains of the great Northwest to the shores of the Atlantic Ocean, this is Americana Outdoors, presented by Garmin. This week on Americana Outdoors, it's all about making dreams come true as we join Jeff Reynolds and Wade Middleton on two separate hunts where they each get the opportunity to scratch off animals from their bucket lists. First, we'll start with Jeff as he joins us in Texas to hunt an animal that's left him mesmerized since the first day he laid eyes on them. Man, there's something about animals with just big, huge horns. And been in South Texas some, um, seeing some of these exotics down here, the axis is something that's just intrigued me ever since the first time I seen them. You notice how smart these axis are. They have a nose like no other. I, I think their sense of smell, I don't know that it's better than a whitetail, but sometimes a whitetail will be kind of curious as to, you know, what's going on. If you make a noise, a whitetail may throw its head up and look. Them axis are not that way. I mean, the times that I've been around them, I mean, anything that alerts them, they're just gone. They don't stand around and look to see what it was, they're out of there. One of the first noises I heard down here in South Texas when I first started coming that I had no idea what it was is just a loud bark. Whenever they get alarmed, these axis just make a loud bark. And I mean, it'll kind of make the hair stand on your head when you don't know what it is, but they're a pretty elusive animal. You know, this has been one of my, I guess you would call it dream hunts. You know, been friends with Wade and working with him for a long time. Our schedules kind of, kind of lined up where we could get to come down here and get to hunt one of these things. When he told me that, man, I was just, I was beside myself. I started telling my wife, hey, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but just in case this was to happen and I actually get to shoot one of these, you know, if I do everything right and, and shoot him and, and recover him, better clear out a place on the wall because it's coming home with me. We really kind of had this one axis that I kind of had my eye on. He was a wide, tall, just, I mean, he was a huge axis. And seeing trail camera pictures, he was fairly regular to this one stand. Wade had come up with a good strategy. We'd funded this area before. How we were gonna get in there, we're gonna come up through this creek and come through the brush to the stand. We thought the axis would be out in front of us so we wouldn't be spooking anything. The first evening when we get up here, we go into that stand. Expectations for me are high. And cows had just set up camp there. And I'm like, are you kidding me? There's only like 10 cows on this whole pasture that I don't know how many acres it is, a huge place. And they happen to be right there where we're wanting to hunt. And I'm like, well, this is probably not good. But, you know, run these cows off and we'll climb up in the stand and set and see what happens. About an hour into it, you know, I catch a glimpse of something. It had some red in it, kind of moving through the brush. My heart just goes jumping like crazy. I'm thinking, oh, here he comes. No, that's cows coming back. So, I mean, what do you do? I mean, it's too late to, to run to another stand. You know, you don't want to take a chance of messing that other stand up. You know, you're going to wait till the next day or your next hunt to go hunt. So we just kind of stuck it out there. And lo and behold, you know, we like targets opportunity down here in South Texas. And uh, when we crawled out of the stand, there happened to be some pigs come in. Turn to the field in just a moment, but in the meantime, take this opportunity to subscribe to our Americana Outdoors YouTube channel. The next morning, Jeff and Wade went to a pop-up blind near a pipeline in another part of the property before the sun rose, with the hopes that Axis would feed in the area. 30, 45 minutes, it starts getting light. We see a couple whitetail bucks moving around out there that they get up there fairly close to us and 
Wade looks over there on brush line where he had said, you know, the times he'd sit there before, that's where they normally come out at. Sure enough, there was two axis does come out. They were actually standing over there eating off a, I think it's a bean tree over there, mesquite beans or something. And I'm like, man, that's a good sign. I mean, at least it's an axis. I mean, it's the right thing we're hunting. Twenty thirty minutes after we see them axis does, we just happened to look over there in the brush right where they come out, and I mean it was like, like a dream. You just see horns sticking up, and I don't mean just sticking up a little bit. I'm talking about knocking the tops out of these mesquite trees. Now this is my story, so I'm gonna tell it how I want to, because I got pretty excited. My heart goes to jumping, and I'm like, is is this real? I mean, I didn't know they got that big. Well, as he starts getting close to us, I thought I'm gonna range him right now as he's walking because he's not gonna get, you know, if he stops, I wanna be ready to shoot. Well, as I range this animal, it goes to target lock. And that's, to me, that's the coolest thing about the Garmin Zero when it says target lock. It makes me think of an airplane with a fixing to send a missile out. Target locked, you're not gonna miss him. Just pull the trigger. Well, it hits target lock 28 yards. He stops, broadside, Wade gives me the go-ahead, he's ready. What do I do? I pull the trigger. What happens? Nothing. You always have to remember to take your safety off. Still good, yep. God, did you see the horse? <laughs> yes, I did. Holy crap, dude. I mean... As soon as I pulled the trigger, I couldn't stop shaking. I still can't. <laughs> Golly, man, I mean, you talking about a dream hunt. I have always wanted to hunt with them axes, see? Whew. They are beautiful. <laughs> that sucker walked out, and I'm like, God, I couldn't say nothing over but horns. <laughs> and I mean, on a String, he come right straight over here to us. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. I'm telling you. He hadn't run, he hadn't, I pulled a trigger and I started shaking some bad weight. I ain't ever shook like that in my life. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. <laughs> I thought he I felt the rocks start to fall out from under the blind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, I just, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> just hope he don't go very far and <laughs> hope I did the right thing. Well, we watched the footage back and the shot looked good, but you never know till you get your hands on them, so we're fixing to go start looking. Cross your fingers. As we get on the blood trail, you know, we're following it and I'm kind of, hey, you know, it's okay blood trail, but not great, but we're in a lot of dirt. So it's kind of hard to see. It's not, you know, it's not like getting in, you know, dead leaves where it just shows up really good. He's bleeding out of both sides. I mean, you, far apart as this blood is. So it had to be a complete pass through, at least it's sticking out on the other side. We tracked this animal maybe 100 yards, probably not even quite 100 yards. And I look up in front of me right in these mesquites where it's kind of shaded and he's piled up right there. Oh, right there he is. <laughs> he's done, baby, he is done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, man. Perfect shot. That's what I wanted more than anything. I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, I've watched these animals down here. I mean, I've never hunted one. I've never hunted anything bigger than a whitetail. 
And I've always, like, man, they're just so pretty and big horns. I've always just kind of just wanted to hunt one. And Wade gave me the opportunity. And when I ranged him, I ranged him at 28 yards. And I pulled the trigger and the bow did all the work. I mean, he didn't run less than 100 yards. That is going to make some great venison. And it is going to make a beautiful mount on my wall. We will be looking at you, buddy, for a long time. I sure appreciate it. Congratulations, Jeff. This entire dream hunt for your access is surely one that will never be forgotten. We'll return to the field in just a moment, but in the meantime, take this opportunity to subscribe to our Americana Outdoors YouTube channel. You know, a water buck is a, an animal that always really intrigued me. The size of them is, is massive, and you, when you watch them kind of work through the, the different types of terrain that at least I've encountered them in, I've always thought they were, were really cool and really impressive. And as you learn more about them, it's just, and you look at the mounts and the stories that other people have told, it was an animal that I said, hey, I'd, I'd be interested if an opportunity came up to take a good, mature, a good, mature water buck. Waiting for things to get perfect on any kind of shot opportunity is always one of the biggest challenges. And that's really my biggest role <laughs> in this is trying to be patient. But the one thing I can definitely say is I can see some huge water buck horns off in the distance. You spotted some water buck obviously across the way and see if we can get onto them and get nice and close. I do want to have a good look at them again, but on the spotting scope, they look good. Um, our biggest challenge is all the other game. But luckily, this valley is quite steep. I don't foresee those water back running through and busting out anything on our side of the valley. In any stock, there's a lot of risk reward. And I've got to say, I'm probably a little more impatient than most people when it comes to stalking. You know, when I'm rattling deer, I'm covering ground a lot. When I'm chasing hogs at home, I'm probably covering ground far too fast. But I've learned in my trips overseas that, you know, number one, you're always going to trust your pH. Whatever he says is always is the law. It's the rule. It's the go. And they are so much more patient in general in most of these types of hunting situations. Carl's style of hunting is, it's, man, it's something we all can learn from. I mean, hunting into the wind, number one thing. I mean, that's the perfect thing we all want to do. Patience, don't rush, don't rush, don't rush. Use your natural cover, use the valleys, go out of your way to not draw attention. Try not to get picked off by other things between you and them and, and, and get in there as quiet and calmly as you can so that you can assess the animal and take a good shot. I mean, it it's, sounds simple, but it's not always simple. Just get on this thing. The one on the right. The one on the right. It's walking. No, no, the one in the right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, on the shoulder. Just behind the shoulder there. Squeeze it all. He's just wait, wait, wait. Bad angle. Bad angle, just wait for him. We got lots of yarn. That's still really up. Bad angle, bad angle. Just not right. We got lots of yarn, just wait. Just stay on that gun. Ah, oh, come on, man. Sit down. Just gonna wait for him to come. Yep, 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 yep. 
we're inside of 200 yards now, but your challenge is there's so many animals moving around in that area is making sure you're shooting the right one. So you want a full good, in my opinion, you always want a full good view of any target that you're taking. And, and then you want to be able to put everything into that opposite shoulder at any time. It's something I talk about in our whitetail hunting a lot. And it's just now it's mostly about being patient and me not blowing the shot. We'll return to the Eastern Cape of South Africa in just a moment. But in the meantime, take this opportunity to subscribe to our Americana Outdoors YouTube channel. While we were gone, the water buck reappeared and Wade and Carl are now closing the distance for an even better shot opportunity. One of the other water buck have come back, so we just gotta be careful they are too now. But to his left, this water buck, I just saw one of one while he's moving directly over these water dogs again. Okay? There he is. And the other bull to the left seem shaking his head. Just walk, he dropped very quickly. Let's just walk there. Okay. Reload for me. Reload safety on. Yeah. Come. If he gets up, you fire. Yep. Free hand. Power right down. Yep. He's moving, I can see his head, but yeah. he's down. Watch a hole, watch a hole. <laughs> Just get on the sticks for me. Just want to cover him. Yep. Just gonna watch him. I think he's absolutely done, and I think it was a world long shot. But it doesn't hurt just to be safe. Yep. I'm gonna lift it a little bit for you for your height. I think. I think you dropped his heart, but. Good. I think the top <laughs> of the heart, I think you cut it. That sound and the way he dropped yeah. it like a spine shot. Often we say it's when the, when the heart empties out, and at that precise moment, you hit him when the pump's empty and then they lose all compression, they actually drop like a spine shot. The sun on him is pretty. Yes, it is. <laughs> pretty. Gorgeous watching him underneath those rocks over there fading, you can see his And this year, when, where you see there behind him, this old rock, this is yeah. the old um, crawls of the first settlers that came. Really? And this was livestock country back in the day, and today we've brought it back to wild life. That was back when they would build these for keeping their livestock Correct. in those rocks. Correct. A lot of work to do all those rocks. And, and we've literally kept the, the those old ruins oh, as I a reminder that. of the past, you know. I've hunted in a lot of places where you see those in New Zealand and Kentucky and elsewhere, and I'm just always... I'm always in awe of the effort it took to build those and the stories behind them. Exactly. Man. Hey, Freddy. That is a bull. That is a bull, my friend. Hey, look at that. Look at the oiliness on those walls. Yeah, what causes that? That is the rut coming up. Wow. For the water buck, they start a bit earlier and that's that musky smell as he rubs his body and then he rubs it all over the bush. You can smell the musky you smell. You can smell it. Remember I said to you coming up, when we got like perfect wind in our face, I said, do you smell that? That's the water bucket. Yeah. And now you obviously yeah, strong. You can really smell it. The sheen on these horns is something I was not prepared for. That's yes. so amazing. And it's, a, you know, it's obviously a short time of the year you're ever gonna see that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is what you want. Do you see this yellow yeah. uh, perspex color coming through? 
that there is when they get rock hard and solid. Otherwise, they're a bit pulpy, slow and young. But he's a great bull and he's a good one to take. And you made a textbook shot. We're going to get him clean yeah. up, take some pictures, get yes. him back to camp. And a great water back. I love it. I love every bit of it. Fantastic. Great memory. Congratulations, Wade. As we've seen today, patience is a virtue. And if you'd like to hunt in South Africa, we strongly recommend reaching out to John X Safaris, where they can help make your African dream hunt a reality. Hey, thank you for watching, and join us next week on a new episode of Americana Outdoors. Americana Outdoors is a CareCo TV production.